What's up, everyone? It's me, Adam Prime, and we are back for another Tokubru podcast this week in Toku. And with me, as always, to talk about King Oger and Geats, my lovely and endearing co-host. Hi, I'm Stormy. No, that all you gotta say? Stormy. <laughs> so yeah, um, <laughs> not a ton of news this week. Uh, we have Hideaki on the robot, but we're not gonna get into it. Oh jeez. We're not getting into it. <laughs> Yet. So, this is a pretty interesting week. So, you just want to get right into uh, King Oger? Yeah. Do you have any... How about that? I don't got nothing. Uh, I'd have to say that this episode of King Oger was not bad. It was just kind of fine. It was set up. It was a lot of just set up. It was a lot of, like, kind of just playfulness, which is understandable because we had a lot of really well, the big cast plot inter- stuff. The cast interaction was really good, though. Yeah, it's like the chemistry between these characters makes up for it. And, and it didn't feel terrible. It in was spades. Ju- it like, just... It went by really fast. Like if also. we didn't, yeah, if like we didn't like these characters, this would be a bad episode. But like this is a this is a good episode. You know? But we literally open Not up. Not a whole lot happens, but yeah. it's good. Um, we literally open up with um, the man in the spider mask, and we already know who this is. We all know who it is. Spiders and, man. And he's pretty much just going up to Death Yark, and he's just like, um, you ready to do the thing? And he's like, oh. Uh, well, we're going to steal the things from him because I'm not dead yet and we're still in conflict with them. <laughs> so I'll take the three great gods, I guess. Meanwhile, with Reculus, he's taking credit for all of it. He was like, Big yep, shocker. guys, it was all me. And he's not sure if Gyra's alive or not. And he, he interrogates Im- uh, B. Yeah, he immediately took ter- interrogates kagaragi and is just like um how did you do it he's just like hey uh it just short happened. Of a miracle. yeah it just said uh it didn't happen that somebody found his body near my near my village you know that was just convenient i don't know how that got there in no way lying <laughs> wait wasn't it like oh it was like some criminal had actually taken gira's remains and yeah had used it or something like that yeah something like that and, he, and yeah and he's immediately like okay then it's how did you important. legend Ki- then how'd you do legend king oger like you said and then, and then he immediately cool. said hey we should throw gira a funeral <laughs> which regulus just kind of goes along with like i kind of get it but at the same time it's like he just kind of went along with it yeah exactly he's going with the funeral and then we immediately go to the others planning this funeral including gira which gira's idea was immediately just well the whole the whole thing is that oh if gira somehow shows that he's back from the dead and what (laughs) it's nothing trying trying to be subtle about something or i bet you the microphone did not pick it up that's fair but yeah, Heat no, and candy. No, but, I'm not. You know, no <laughs> yeah. Just rattle around in your teeth. But uh, basically, the whole premise is like, oh, like if he comes back from the dead, quote unquote, uh, then it'll show that Reculus actually is a liar and a bad king, and he might be able to usurp the throne. So yeah. So immediately, Guy was like, "What if I came back as a zombie?" And was just like, bruh, By bruh. Way, some fantastic Reculus faces in this episode. All of them. But look I feel hilarious. like the I feel like the actor was trying to not laugh at a couple of them. It's yeah, great. It's so good. Uh, Blue ends up coming up yeah, with the y'all, idea. Yeah, of... almost like, what if you came back as a robot? Which Gira seems fine with, but Himino is just like, uh, no, that's stupid. He's like, that's stupid. Every ki- every kid wants to be a robot. No, every dude's dream is to be a cyborg. Mm-hmm. Everyone loves cyborgs, and she's like, you're fucking weird. Now come back as Jesus. Which, don't, I don't know how he would get up this tall. Uh, stilts. Oh, honestly. yes. Stilts in the small ass coffin. I just love his, like, the expressions of just like, ah, oh, I am your god now. <laughs> like, Bring me your virgins. I'm T-posing on you. Pretty much. And Reculus and, just has a stroke. <laughs> and they immediately talk to Rita being like, hey, can you just say that Gyra's body was found and just confirm that he's quote-unquote dead? Because... You know, you're the most, like, absolute law around here. 
but Rita does stand their ground just being like, no, that's lying. I'm not lying. I'm not going to lie. That's literally the whole point. <laughs> exactly. And literally the whole point <laughs> gets ready to leave. And Himino is immediately just like, well, have you ever heard of Mufon? Mufin, I think. Mufin? It sounds like muffin, but with an O. It's like, oh, Mufin, it's this... Muffin. It, but first of all, can I also just say, of course it's her kingdom where the, a cartoon of this comes from. The Yeti. Uh, and it's like, oh, it's a show that children watch, you know, ever since the Bugniark have been attacking, it provides them escape. Like, in this one episode, there's a group of evil smugglers in Mufin's village, and Rita just starts, like, going apeshit with the eyes. Screams. And just, it just screams. It's just, no, no spoilers. No, I just... can't spoilers, like... Yeah, exactly. It just says no spoilers. So, because she didn't get to watch this week's episode yet, because she's been out and about. And, by the way, Yellow is now wearing a new wig. <laughs> Leaning a lot more towards the pink. I don't she wanted know to try something new. And, pretty much, they were then gotten to talking about stories and, like, how they were really giving people hope and everything and how Gyra gave... Like, had the orphan kids have the legend of King Oger to keep them, you know, happy, I guess. To keep them Hopeful. believing. Hopeful. Yeah, believing in miracles and that stuff. And then we immediately go, like, back to... The, we go to the funeral. Outside of, like, I think maybe we get a scene with Death in the Ark being like, Alright, let's go do this thing. And we immediately... Start having Reculus giving the speech, like how we saw it in their like thoughts of like, oh, we're gonna say goodbye to Gira and all of this, and let's say one final farewell. And they go to open the coffin, but there's by the way, webs. by the way, Himino and Blue are not subtle at all. Oh yeah, like Yama... like even B has to be like, dude, cool your shit because Gira actually misses his cue. And he it's can't a... open up the coffin, and it looks, and it, you look at it, and even though it looks, it shows that there's nothing there, there's a close-up, but there's, like, it's fishing wire, but, uh, you know, spider webs on it. By the way, can I just say, uh, good on them for finding a different material other than those giant strings of cotton, for once? For once. And immediately... And then who shows up? And then we have the man in the iron mask shows up, and... He's like, hey, what are you going to do with this body? Oh, I just realized something. What? So, big shocker, the mask does come off this episode. Later. Later. But I'm realizing the people don't see his face. What if... He, right, what, if what if Reculus tries to claim that that's Gira? I don't think they can, but, you know... I don't know. Either way, he grabs his coffin. Well, before he does that, the guards immediately run up to him and just say... And he literally just looks at them being like, uh, no. And just snaps his fingers and they immediately pull away from him. And it does look... I don't know if, like, maybe there's, like, a spider somewhere hiding in the distance that's doing all of this. Because all it's all very well acted that it's like, oh, it looks like they're being pulled by strings and stuff like that. Or if this is actually him. this That'll be something interesting to see. Yeah, we don't know see. if he's magic or not. And he immediately is just like the, oh yeah, what will you do the po with the power of the King Oger? And he's just, he's just like, oh, defeat the Bugnark. And he's like, I'm not sure I like that. The, and fucking Reculus is like, so you're siding with the Bugnark, you little piece of shit? And he has this look on his face of like, he's like, are you fucking kidding me? I'll fucking find you. I'll fucking stab you. <laughs> like, that's Reculus's face yeah. on this. Yeah. And, and the man in the iron mask just steals Gyra's coffin after saying he doesn't like commotion after causing one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He just he literally just grabs Gyra's coffin and just books it. And just starts running up and like spider Manning, living on the edge, fighting crime. He's very web of in this episode. Yeah. And we never even see him transform this episode, by the way. Yeah. And he immediately breaks Gyra out of the coffin. Morning sunshine. Vera says hello. And he it's, it seems that he is a part of the Bugnark. So I I'm wondering if this is gonna I don't go know towards if he is. Well he says it. No, he says he what if I No, he says what if I told you? He's like Yeah, he's asking asking him a question. And he's like he's like, What would you say if I told you that? Like he's mm -hmm. asking him as a question. And then they immediately because this is King Oger. Because King Oger just loves its poop jokes. 
They immediately go into a poop joke. Honestly, I wasn't a bit... I, I like potty humor. Like, it makes me laugh. I know it's low-hanging fruit, but it gets a giggle out of me most of the time. I wasn't really laughing with this one. It just kind of seemed like there was, like, no point to it. Cryptic poop. <laughs> like, at least with, like, like the joke with Blue, it's like, it was like a pun on a thing, and it was a, a miscommunication, and then he's just like, fuck off! <laughs> but... Oh, yeah, but what about this, the one... Just, like, what about the literal shit speech. pile? <laughs> Episode three. Or episode four, whichever one was in Yellow's Kingdom, you remember? Was there? Yeah, you remember? it was That was the poo monster. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, that was the dung beetle episode. Yeah, and they had to shoot, and she literally shot the shit. Into a beautiful sculpture. <laughs> anyway, it's like, at least, like, then, again, it was a dung beetle. It's all bug-themed. That makes sense. Yeah. This is just like, why are you talking about this? Because it's a storyteller, Stormy. Talking about poop, apparently. Exactly. And then, you know, the big bug nyark show up, and... Gira literally wastes it into nothing, but as soon as it's defeated, you get these, like, little blue borbles. Apparently, like, during the, the big attack that we had seen with Legend... It's Legend King Ojo, right? Yeah. Uh, there had been, like, this bee character that we saw earlier in the Bugnar Cave or whatever. Yeah. And had, like, planted, like, their babies on it, and they suddenly, like, grew. They sprouted. Blech. And they exploded and immediately knocks out all all of the gods into getting immediately kidnapped like just but it was just um uh kabuto scorpion and hopper they were the only ones who were fully kidnapped and bugnyark's like finally now it's turned the world upside down after we send them to the sun because it was like oh and like these three guardian spirits will raise raise the sky as if to touch the sun and then the world would be turned upside down something along the lines of that and he immediately is like, it's all why is news. nothing happening? <laughs> and the man in the iron mask immediately is just like, I was having a hard time getting these. Thanks. These are mine now. <laughs> I now have a gun. And he immediately freezes Bugnyark so he can't move. And so, There's a fishing wire again. Yeah. And immediately then just shoots him. And he literally says, "Do you like, Deathnyark is saying that he's tricked him and he's spent centuries millennia tricking him so it's confirming that he is old and the ones that like started the legends of king oger and the legend that the bugnark were following and he was the one that wrote them just so that he could get his stupid mask off and yeah we don't know why the mask was on him but once he throws because i always thought like gun, oh what if it just kept him from telling stories but no he's been talking just fine the whole time and he immediately turns his iron mask into a knife and he you doesn't, know, for stabbing. Yeah, and he doesn't transform or anything, but immediately shoots Death Nyark, which was a fake. And it just ends with him saying, this is my story. And he is Jeremy. 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 It's him, he's Jeremy. Jeremy's journey, everybody. It's Jeremy, guys. He is the Spider-Man. And yeah, that's kind of the episode. I don't really have anything significant to say about this. Do you? It just seems like it's just setting up the I like character. his design. He's very cryptic. <laughs> yeah. He's just kind of like, hey, I'm just here for setup. He also behaves yep. like a cryptid. cryptid. And he, he's like, you'll see me transform next episode. <laughs> but overall, yeah, it just was a setup episode. There wasn't a really a whole lot to say. I he, Like you said, I like his outfit. I like how much he was like swinging around, shooting webs. It'll be interesting to see. Like, yeah, it's like, I can't wait to see how he will be played off the other characters. And he doesn't seem like he could be in a very similar, like, thought and look at pattern as, uh, as Ka Kagaragi. Of, like, the, you have to watch what you're really seeing them say. Yeah, it wasn't the whole thing with, like, you had to read in between the lines with him. That's what they were saying in the magazines and shit. Well, I do like that his, like, the souls just go into his little spray can <laughs> that he just shakes up so he can fucking crop dust <laughs> fucking people to death. Oh, my God. What? What else would you say? It's a bug spray can. He gives That's the... not... <laughs> I don't want pesticides. I was about to be like, this is my pesticide. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, no, he has keys. By the way, we forgot to add that part. He has keys. Yo, yeah, the like souls that he collected turned into a key that he locked off his face. Yeah, that's how he got his got the mask um, off his face. Honestly, you want to just move on to Yeats? Yeah, 
and we immediately open up Geet's... By the way, I saw this uh, thumbnail a little bit sooner. It looked like he was holding a puppy. <laughs> it did. And we immediately have Tycoon talking to Kekura, saying, Hey, you can't let my sister fucking know that I'm part of this. So, we then immediately get fucking cult leader... Being like, hey, since we have somebody who pretty much have broken ass powers and the Desire Royale's kind of going boring, uh, we're gonna make a thing. You have to go find the dead ID cores that the Jamato stole. Go find those for us, please. And uh, the people who have the most get to live. <laughs> yeah, and you can drop another player. Oh yeah, wasn't it like if you have the most, you get to choose a player to drop? Yeah, it's like, yeah, you get you get the right to choose another player that can get dropped. And he, I like how he literally just said, he's like, this is an arrangement to make sure it has a balanced game against the players with abilities that are, look, paramount to, um, to cheating. So he- And this, Buff is just like, well, oh, shit. He's like, you son of a bitch. And we immediately then get a scene between Ace and Zine. And Ace, well, Zine asks him, it's like, well, are you wishing for a world with or without the desired Grand Prix? And obviously, you know how Ace answers. He's like, fuck the Desire Grand Prix. I need my mame. My mum. And, and Zine's like, oh, wow, disregarding your fans and everything. He's like, I don't want it to go away, but I get it. But he, it does give him uh, his... The Laser Rays Riser. Laser Rays Riser again. Yeah. And he's like, I am your supporter. I support you. And I had a funny moment with you that I, vo that I voiced where... To compare, like, what these guys are, it's almost like if someone were to come up to us and just be like, hey, we'll transport you into another dimension where, like, Kamen Rider is real, and then you just get to, like, be in the show. And then that's what Zine is. Like, it's in like, can you, and it's like, oh, and him wishing for a world without the Desire Grand Prix is being like, I don't want to be in the world without Kamen Rider. And if you're a fan, obviously, like, how we are, you can even see, like, us time traveling as us going to, like, the different seasons and stuff like that. Or, like, you know, being able to bounce in between them. It's almost kind of an interesting parallel. Of just, it like, is. you would have to actively make the choice to be like, I want this character to be happy, so I'm going to give up the fact that Kamen Rider is even a thing. Like, y you can even see, like, his past supporting that Kikara mentioned of just, like, oh, you usually just cheer for them, and then it ends, and then you're like, oh, how moving, and then you move on to the next one. Is that just, like, a writer finale, essentially? It pretty much. I don't know, just kind of an interesting thought piece, I guess. It is. It's very interesting. And and he literally even says, he's like, oh, the feeling I'm, I'm searching for means to be parted with you. It's pretty much him saying, he's like, I know it's going to hurt me, but it's like, I'm okay with saying goodbye. In order for you to be happy, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We immediately, Ace gets transported to, like, the Jamato where Baroba blew up everything. Who yeah. remembers can you imagine if, like, he had to, Can you imagine if he hadn't, like, given that to him, like, a little bit too late? Yeah, it's like, well, I guess I don't get to use that at all, ever. Again. And we immediately have Neon and Sara teaming up. Sara had made an app on the phone to be or able to... Or found an app on the phone, I'm not sure. I don't know, it seemed... like Nudge Sparrow was using it, too. Yeah, but I guess it would make sense that he would have that. But, uh, yeah, it tracks down ID cords. Yeah, an ID cord Tycoon tracker. isn't slick. Um, we just see him in the background. You could just see him with his tree branches and shit. And... Uh, at one point, he does something really clever of, like, using, like, a ninja technique in suit. Well, before, that's during when Buffa just shows up to attack them. Yeah. They run into Buffa immediately, which I'm realizing I have no screenshots for, which Tycoon luckily saves them. I couldn't remember them. who it was, because there was someone else that shows up. Um, yeah, so Tycoon got lucky and distracted Buffa long enough for them to get away, and they immediately find some ID cores, and we immediately go back to the, I guess they call it the Salon? Something like that. And it's pretty much Neon and and Sara hanging out. And then suddenly, Nudge Sparrow... Does Nudge Sparrow show up? Yeah. yeah. Nudge, Nudge Sparrow is just like, hey, um, we need to team up so we can get rid of Buffa. You guys can trust me. I'm definitely not a piece of shit who would ever dis like, do definitely that with not, my bull no, cut definitely and not a backstabber. fucking ponytail. <laughs> definitely not a backstabber. But he offers, like, you know, this giant pouch full of ID cores. And literally just says, oh, just for goodwill, you can just keep them. 
Yeah, because he's like, I need, I need to ha- to have someone knock out Buffa. This is our opportunity. If we all team up together and we all wish for the same thing, we could get it done together. And that was kind of like his like peace offering of sorts. Big shocker, he's still a piece of shit. But well, wait, no one well, is wait. surprised. Well, wait. I'm sorry, he's a piece of shit. I hate him. And then immediately, um, Sara's uh, supporter shows up, who is a tanuki statue with big tits and huge balls. <laughs> It's it, it it's it's Kawa. It's Kawa. He's hiding behind the couch. Yeah, he's hiding behind the couch doing a voice, and he's like, um, <laughs> he has such a weird face when Neon finds him, just like the shh. Dude, what? <laughs> like, he's like, oh no. Uh, and <laughs> Kaikun actually makes a pretty funny face too, and they ask for Which... she, Sara asks her supporters' opinion on it. He says, "Go uh, if it can get you more, go for it," because he just wants Sarah Sarah to win. And as she's leaving, like. This lucky bastard, like, she doesn't look at him despite the fact that he was just in full view of her when she turned around to say yeah. goodbye. It was really funny. Exactly. It was so lucky. And even Nudge Sparrow was just like, that was stupid. Yeah. And then we even- and then we go into Geeks being like, hey, Buffa, we haven't talked in a while. I brought you some more cow boo- moo. Cow moo. <laughs> By the way, I fucking live for this shit. I have been waiting. Waiting. And we pretty much just, this is Buffa and Geats realizing that they're seeing eye to eye. Like, they're finally on the same team for once. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm surprised you would get rid of the Desire Grand Prix. And he's like, he's like, no, I need to free my mom. And he's like, oh, so you did, your fucking stupid wishes did have a purpose. Huh. Fuck face. Wow, it's almost like we told you that directly a couple of times. Either way. But anyway, there's only six writers left out of all of those people. Or at least the the six are the only ones who have chosen to show up and do it. I guess so. So, we immediately, like, we have Geats literally saying he will show no mercy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's like, I will kill them. I will find them. And I will kill them. And that's pretty much all that, like, Buff has seen really communicated was just them talking. Which was really nice, because it was like... Again, this is what I had been missing. I love these two interacting like this. Yeah. And then we immediately have... I like, was t- that, this is what I was talking about, like, oh, there's only six riders left. Yeah, Surumi's just like, why do we have to have them fight each other? And this is when the cult leader just reveals, we're not giving them jack shit. I didn't ask for your fucking opinion. Yeah. One, I didn't ask for your fucking bitch-ass little opinion. And two... We're not even going to fucking give them their wish. We're going to wipe our hands clean and And tell them to fuck out. out. Yeah. And tell them to fuck out. Get them to fuck off. Like, we're going to see how this will wrap up. We're not feeding the circus animals anymore, bitch. Let them eat each other. Yeah. We'll see what happens when we see them fight to the death. Anyway, so as I was saying, uh, Nudge Sparrow is a piece of shit. Yeah. He made up a plan with them. Just like, oh, like, these are the parts that got pinged and I haven't looked there yet. Uh, here's a map, and then he goes and just like, oh, by the way, Buffa, go and fuck up these people here. Yeah, he's like, hey, Buffa, I want revenge for the disaster and everything, and I'm like, you piece of shit, and Buffa had the same thought as we did, and I like that Buffa, like, Geats is still hanging out with him, and he's just like the, hey, what are you gonna do? He's like, oh, I know who I'm gonna fucking murder, and he's just like, yeah, he's like, He's like, do I even have to say who the fuck I'm going to kill? So, uh, surprisingly enough, Geats actually goes to or Sarah and Nago Neon and Sara, are... and he's just like, well, you guys almost just got played. <laughs> like, by... You need to be smarter. Yeah, like, Nudge Sparrow was literally about to feed you to Buffa. And, and then Buffa goes, and he's like, Well, before we get that, bitch. he's like, they're like, Ace, you're not going to attack us? You're anti desigra And he's just like, yeah, but... You're not my enemies, the staff is. And that's kind of where I guess Buffa and Geats differ. Because Buffa's just like, I want to fuck everybody up, including these technically innocent players, if you think about it. And Geats is just like, no, my fight's not with you. Exactly. So we get a glorious Buffa fight. Just just fucking his shit shit up. Just kicking the shit out of uh, Nudge Sparrow. He tries to run, immediately gets blocked off. Even when he tries to run away from another way, he just throws the chainsaw sword. He goes the other way. Giant zombie hand waves are just there to block him in. He just is a You ain't getting away this time. And he... Oh, it's so he glorious. Was, he was trying to put up such a fight to not get his ID core crushed. And 
fucking buffo wastes no time and doesn't fully crumble it, but drops so he crushes it enough. Yeah, he crushes it enough for him to be retired. And obviously he screams that don't think this is over and Nudge Sparrow is dead. Quote unquote. I imagine they'll probably find some way to bring him back because his thing didn't get fully crushed, but And it immediately got I taken. I can dream. I can dream. Yeah, it did get immediately taken. By the crazy gardener. He's back. Mm-hmm. Because he has stuff he wants. And we have a big shock later in the episode. Which which is pretty much, that's where we end, is, like, the farmer With the being, writers, that is. Well, yeah, the, he's just like, you're fucking alive? What the hell? And then we cut back to Surumi. Wait, we're not gonna go over the... Oh, yes. Kikara and yeah, Baroba? Yeah, Baroba is disappointed in what happened, in all the things. I guess she was disappointed seeing Nudge Sparrow just get fucking annihilated. Like, this isn't what I wanted. And Kaker is like, oh man, after I worked so hard on a plan. Oh no. What a mess. Which I guess, you know, is basically like, I guess you were more right on the... He's not in it for... He's me. not... He he actually did just have this well thought out plan. Rather than, oh, I guess he might be another Baroba. So that's, I guess, nice, I guess. And we cut back to Sarumi. And we have... Oh wait, wait, uh, we actually... When we were talking about it getting stolen, we didn't mention uh, that it was... The I did say it was the evil gardener. Did, did you? Yes. Either way, it was him. He stole the thing. Yeah. And he's still going to try and wish for his world, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, surround me. You happy? My boy is back! <laughs> Punk Jack is back along with Lord Reginald. He yeah! Back. It's Halloween you win, bitches. I am so happy. I, like <laughs> I knew he didn't. He didn't get flowers. I didn't see a corpse. I knew he was still alive somehow. Also, Reginald, why are you here? Because <laughs> he's here. I like that he also says he's like, "Wow, everything's kind of gone to shit after I left, huh?" That's surreal. And then we he's get, right. the, and then we get the rule of when the Desire Grand Prix ends, any every aspect and memory of the Desire Grand Prix will be wiped from this world. So. Yeah, they're, they're not getting nothing. So yeah, we are in the final arc. Oh, this was also a really good episode. I This one was fun. Well, I'm about to say, I'm like, it sucks to have beat King Ojo this week is because what have we been waiting for? To see Nudge Sparrow get fucking whooped. And it was gr- glorious. It was glorious. And it's... again, and just a really good Buffa fight in general. Just Buffa's really great. The fact that it was finally... it was The fact that it was Buffa that was beating his ass made it all the sweeter. Like, well, yeah, because like, you're being a greedy it, ass bitch. It wouldn't have been the same if it was Geats. It would have been quick. Buffa was like, I'm gonna make you suffer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also, just like the conversation between Geats and Buffa is also like was really one good. of the reasons I loved this episode, just because I want more of that. Also, K was wacky antics were hilarious. And also, Punch Jack's back, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, like I knew that was gonna win as soon as like a uh, win yeah. showed up. Punk Jack is back, baby. My he also boy. has a spinoff that we haven't watched yet. Oh, why haven't we watched that? Because it's not out yet. Oh, but yeah, no. Anything else you really want to say about this episode? Um, it was pretty straightforward. Yeah, but... pretty straight. I I guess it again. Yeah, I think I pretty much said everything I want to say about it. Just like yeah, the like again, like finally getting that dynamic between Geats and Buffa that I missed. Punk Jack is back. I got to see Nudge Sparrow just bite it, just eat it. By Buffa, I have no complaints, honestly. <laughs> like, yeah, like, again, I'm it was excited pretty for much. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is an amazing episode. But like, those nuggets are so good that like, I'm just like, this was great. <laughs> I feel like both of these weeks are just setting up for even greater next weeks. Mm-hmm. And especially so that could be really fun, especially with um next week having Spider Kumos' debut. I feel like we're gonna have a lot more to say with King Odra next week. Um, Geats is again just ramping up more and more. So Punk it's... Jack's back, back, back. Back again. Yeah, but say it seems Punk like Jack's he, back. <laughs> he's gonna be fighting Geats again, so let's see how well he's gonna stand up. So Yeah. Any I'm happy. any final hat thoughts? Happy Punk Jack's back. Yeah. Doesn't have the jacket though anymore. It's fine. I'm just happy he's here. <laughs> just like, I'm glad he just didn't have his brains just splattered on the wall. I was traumatized. Uh the second I saw Cheremy got their flowers, I was just like he hasn't gotten his. That means he's alive somehow, and here he is. Yeah, but neither is Nudge Sparrow. I know, but like, 
Maybe that just means we get to watch his ass get beaten again. I'm okay with that. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's pretty much it this week. Pretty quick. Yeah, pretty good stuff. Um, so yeah, get excited for next week. We got the uh, debut of the true sixth ranger. And this will be nice and short and sweet. Next one will probably be super long. <laughs> probably. We'll have to see. All right. so, Thanks so much for listening, guys. So until next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.